So today I really wanted to discuss building collapses in Nigeria. About a, a month ago I actually submitted an article for, uh, publishing on construction challenges in Nigeria. Really enough, I was told it was, it was a little boring. Since then we've had two building collapses. It's in there. This is my secretary of the Tavaji organization. One of their members is their four kids who was there. I love this week on Wednesday in Nigeria, yet again, another building collapsed in Lagos Island, a mixed-use development that had a school on the top floor, uh, residential apartments also in the building, and also shops on the ground that unfortunately went down at around uh, 10, 10 a.m. On, on Wednesday morning. Unfortunately, when the building would be, um, or the school part of the building definitely would be um, filled with students. So again, this building was marked for uh, demolition by Lagos State. But apparently, I mean, it's not news. People were aware that the building had been marked. People were aware the building was unsafe. Some people are saying that even the tenants are aware of the fact that the houses are not good to live in. Unfortunately, Nigerians have become desensitized to warning signs as poor construction has become common practice. If I put this on your building and I say it needs to be demolished, you know, then within 60 days, 60 working days, this building needs to go down. Another thing you are facing are people in those areas basically just refusing to leave. This, they have nowhere else to go. At this point, they're actually willing to risk their lives, which the risk the life of their children. This is not going to be the first school building to collapse. In 2004, another school building in Joss collapsed. Its foundation could no longer support the weight due to a conversion. At the end of the day, they cannot afford to move anywhere else, especially in a place like Nigeria where you're paying your rent a year in advance. Especially if you paid your rent in advance, three months into the year, Lagos State is telling you you need to evacuate with your family. The purchasing power of Nigerians right now in this economy is very weak. They don't just have it stacked up sitting in a savings account. Most of the average Nigerians living in Lagos Island do not have that disposable income to be able to move. So when you're delivering you know, these quick notices, you, you really do have to think about the impacts of the people because they literally have nowhere else to go. And that's why they end up being in situations you know, where they're fighting the regulatory bodies that are trying to save their lives. Another avoidable tragedy. Lagos Island in particular is notorious for building collapses because of the way you know, the buildings have been erected especially when these places are very densely populated and um, a lot of the regulatory um, measures for how close buildings should be to one another are not enforced. So you actually find that you know, buildings are ridiculously close to each other to the point where emergency services at some points were not even able to you know, navigate through the buildings or through the, the crowds of people also in the area to actually reach the site um, and you know, render services. This building collapse, unfortunately, has claimed the lives of, uh, we're hearing the figure of 14 people. Right now, oh my god, the rescue is there. She seems unstable at the moment, so we cannot tell if she is alive. Uh, oh, she's alive, wow! She is alive! That is so good. She's alive. When I talk about this sense of mistrust, where local area boys were actually telling um, the, secure, uh, the safety agents to move out and let them handle the situation because they felt like they were not dealing with it fast enough. We also heard reports of people from inside the building calling their loved ones saying, look, we're, we're still here, we're trapped. Since these reports have come out, the site has now been closed. It's now at, I think they call it ground zero, where everything is level and plain. Those administering the rules must also be held liable for their own negligence in the enforcement of governing rules, as many have accused them of colluding with engineers, developers and landlords. Practicing engineers um, today probably went to school before I was born. Continuous personal, de personal development that is monitored by regulatory bodies is essential. From a macroscopic level, the importation of substandard materials into Nigeria um, from countries such as, you know, China, Turkey, this needs to stop long term. Nigeria needs to start looking into manufacturing their own building materials and quality building materials where we can see from A to B that this was manufactured in Nigeria. This not only 
um, gives us quality assurance, it also makes us a more sustainable country. It's valuable forex, it makes us more independent, it creates job opportunities. So again, talking about uh, corruption in the industry and how that leads to or contributes to these building collapses and the frequency of them. Now, it's not enough to say we, we had this rule in place and they didn't listen, so it's not our fault that people died. No, you are also there to enforce these rules, that's why you're a government. And when it's other things that you want to enforce and impose on people, you know very well how to do it. We want to see that same passion when it comes to things that pertain to human life. You know, when these buildings go down, going back to the point of um, persecution or the lack thereof, um, I think people are, feel very disheartened of this life, of these lives don't mean anything to them. Because these people are not called to book. We seldom see prosecutions. And if you're not prosecuting anyone for such, it's just going to continue to happen. Every time a building collapses, we need to see formidable action that other people are deterred from doing the same. Designed this or signed off for this. We need to see actual prosecution. It's funny that in other parts of the world, because they want to give people that sense of safety and security and reassure the people, sometimes they even use someone who isn't even entirely to blame or maybe only has a part to blame, but you know, he carries the burden of it. For the people to be able to trust in their authority and to trust that you know this is not going to happen again. Bachelor went on to discuss the criminal implications of professional negligence resulting in the loss of life. He said, how many professionals have been jailed for building collapses? So basically, this is just laying emphasis on, you know, things always seem to get lost in the courts, as they, and many people make reference to it. So it needs to be a swift prosecution by the judiciary system, because if the legal framework is not supporting the enforcement of the regulatory bodies, then they, yes, they are ultimately powerless. Professionals should be held to a code of conduct with legal framework to support this in a swift manner by the judiciary system. Unfortunately, you know, what delays a lot of these situations is uh, court cases, bring someone and try and hold them accountable. You know, the person uh, senior to them maybe gave them an approval. As of 2016, the general manager of the Labour State Border Control Agency, um, and Mr. Shola, Mr. Shola said that 1,104 buildings were sealed. Now, I did see a report actually saying that since this has happened, you know, Legal State has been on a rampage, they've demolished five buildings that have been marked. To ensure that buildings in Lagos State are designed, constructed and maintained to a very high standard of safety, avoiding loss of lives and properties through its building regulatory system, we aim to achieve a 0% of building collapse. Today, the current general manager of that same agency, which is the Lagos State Building Control Agency, Mr. Omotayo of Wakwa has said that Lagos State will be demolishing over 80 buildings um, in the next month as a rapid response to this building collapse that we've just experienced. I heard it again. Um, I think Nigerians are trying to be op optimistic with the situation, but unfortunately uh, it's hard when the same issue literally is happening now weeks apart. But I said as of 2016, uh, over a thousand buildings have been marked by Lagos State. So basically we have a thousand buildings that, you know, are all at There's legal ramifications to demolishing a building. There's also health and safety in terms of building, uh, bringing a building down in a safe manner. I definitely feel like the regulatory bodies, as I've heard other people say, need to be on ground. It's, um, it's, it's disheartening because a lot of these government agencies, so many members of staff, you know, civil servants, they've been there for 10, 20 years. Why is it nobody's job or two people's job? You know, you have two young uh, interns, or you have two NYSC people. There needs to be a list formulated of buildings in Lagos State and um, people who are regularly going to visit these buildings, uh, extremely densely populated, sorry, you know that a lot of rules have probably been broken in an impoverished area. You know, people are doing illegal construction. You have so many people in Lagos and not enough accommodation, or not enough affordable accommodation, should I say. We do have the 17 million housing deficit in Nigeria. Even personally, if you, you know, pay attention, um, I've seen a lot of buildings uh, now. So you're having, you know, four or five people squash into a room, you know, building bunk beds, adding extensions. And 
this is the, this is one of the other big problems that we're having unauthorized extensions people are adding another floor to their building and ordinarily if you want to add another floor to your building you need to go back to your architect does your concept does your design allow for um, these adaptations to be made and if your architect then thinks you know it, it's possible your architect then needs to consult with a structural engineer if the load can accommodate what you're trying to achieve but so we mark this building for demo, de, de, uh, demolition a week later are people coming to see that nobody is using the building? You've certified a building is unsafe and children are using this building as a, as a school premises or a nursery or a crash and nobody in that regulatory body and obviously I'm just saying regulatory body because every regulatory body points to the next regulatory body nobody's going to check that after we've said that this school is unsafe one month later or two months later or ask students still going to school in this building nobody went to check that and this is not the first school building that has collapsed the same thing happened in is it 2014 or 2016 in joss another school building collapsed why because they did an unauthorized conversion they added a floor to the top and the building could not contain the load so in terms of I mean, I, my focus is, is is real estate and property but also the ministry of education also needs to answer some questions in terms of how many illegal schools in unsafe buildings are operating is the Nigerian Society of Engineers, the NS the NSE, sorry, and the Council for the Regulation of Engineering, Corin. While some place the blame with such regulatory bodies, uh, including the Council of Registered Buildings of Nigeria, Corbin, others feel these bodies are not equipped with enough power, who in particular in the ministry signed. Even if I receive a package, I have to sign with my name, which means, you know, I am now liable. Company can say, well, you know, Joanna signed for it, so, you know, Joanna will be held responsible. You know, sometimes professional people try to let their clients know that, you know, what they want to do is not feasible, but because their client is only focused on, you know, uh, the financial aspect and making a profit, you know, they tell the people to go on. As a professional, you need to be able to say, you know, no, I'm not going to go on. And in an economy like this, where everybody needs to make money, I'm the structural engineer. Okay, you want to build for a four-story building, and this is your budget. Okay, I suggest we do three because this four will be a struggle. The client will tell you, build the four. I want four. I'm trying to make money. Things are hard. But as a professional, you're supposed to say no. I know that this is going to end up being an unsafe project, but because you know, the structural engineer in place also is trying to make a living and make ends meet in a difficult economy. So com compromise his professional integrity. The building collapse, it's a massive thing. It's a tragedy. Children have lost their lives. It's an emotional thing. But something as simple as professional integrity can actually affect real change. Even in terms of hiring someone to carry out all jobs around your house. Anything that we do um, that is outside of doing the right thing adds to the wrong thing becoming common practice. We're hearing a lot of mixed data, which is synonymous with Nigeria. We don't have you know, accurate figures. They don't know how many people were in the building. They don't know how many people have been rescued. Different numbers were being flung out. Some people said there was up to 100 people, some said 300 people. In terms of the, the thing with numbers so early to an incident, you know, this does happen. We saw the same thing in Grenfell Tower, where we were getting conflicted reports on how many people died. We saw something similar in Dubai, when a building uh, caught fire, there was conflicting reports on the number of people that died. So initially when buildings collapse it's it's expected that numbers should be shaky unfortunately what we do see in nigeria however is one year or two years or three years down the line uh, when you're reading up on building collapses you can still see that every post research or the post data collection of these are not actually being um, properly documented also sanctions fines criminal prosecutions can also help ensure strict compliance in the future the public should alert their nearest local council development area on buildings suspected to be at risk we also have social media we can take pictures we can tag the right authorities there are a lot of platforms on instagram and social media where you can actually help out um, financially the reality of this situation is that it is going to happen again and it's going to probably not happen again once or twice as i said we have over a thousand buildings 
that are, you know, basically ticking time bombs. Instagram is shedding so much light. If you have a camera, if you have a platform, do the hashtag, do the post, use your voice, lend your voice to the cause, find the right professional people, pay attention to detail. If you see defective buildings, tag the right uh, agency, learn the right agency. I feel like in this video I would have uh, pointed out a few of the appropriate agencies. Um, also, I, I really would, would like to hope that uh, in the future we're more prepared for buildings to come down because unfortunately, as I said, with over a thousand buildings uh, marked for demolition in Lagos State alone, uh, it just goes to show you how many unsafe buildings that we have um, across the landscape. So I just want to conclude this video by commiserating with all the families who have lost loved ones or family members, unfortunately children, in the Tabaji building collapse.